Hello everybody, it's Sunday. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. We went to church, been to eat, went to Best Buy, and we're going home. Today is the 20th of December and I have not addressed any Christmas. Is it the 20th already? Yes. And I have not addressed any Christmas cards. What is wrong with me? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm taking my great niece and nephew shopping tomorrow. So I need to get my butt home and address invitation, I mean invitations. <laughs> now I'm not inviting anybody else to the house. <laughs> we've had plenty of people there, haven't we? I'm just shaking all over the place. Uh, we've had two big parties, so they've been great. Address Christmas cards. You're making me just move all over the place. I need it up there on my stand. And I don't have any Christmas gifts wrapped, just what they wrapped at the drugstore. So I've got all that to get done too. We just had a unusual service today. Uh, we already knew, y'all know I've been telling you for the last week or so that our pastor's wife is gravely ill. And uh, she is still lingering and uh, just keep the prayers going and so our former pastor was preaching today our youth choir which I'm gonna have clips to show you of that they sang was it three songs three songs and just did an amazing job but our um, pastor and a few of his family came in while they were singing and um, he just felt like he needed to address the church today. It was hard. <laughs> it was hard. I don't, I doubt that there was a dry eye in the house, but he just told us that the cancer had, he pretty much said surrounded her brain, didn't he? Surrounded her brain and um, that her time was short. They didn't know when, you know, when the Lord would call her home, but, um, They've been married 41 years, and he's devastated, as any would, anybody would be losing their mate. So, um, it's hard for your pastor to stand up there and cry, and um, it not affect you, because it has all of us. But the amazing thing, and I believe, I really believe this is a result of prayer. She has cancer in the brain. She has cancer in other places in her body. And she's on no medic, no pain medication at all, and she has no pain. I asked my daughter a while ago, who's a nurse, had she ever heard of that, and she said no. Now y'all may have known someone that's gone through, you know, the last stages of cancer, but I know usually they're pumping them with morphine because of the pain. And she's on no medication and no pain. So we went to see her last night uh, when we came in. We'd done Christmas shopping yesterday, and so we just felt, you know, the need that we needed to go by and see her. And she can't speak. She is at home. She can't speak, but she did know who we were. She definitely knew who we were. So um, <coughs> she, um, you know, would raise her eyes and 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 make facial expressions. Of course, we only talked to her for less than a minute, so, and just, um, our, one of our local nail artists who does her nails came over yesterday and did her nails, which was a beautiful thing, and I picked her fingernails up, and I said, you got that bling going on on your fingernails? Because <laughs> she's like me, she loves bling. And then, uh, a Santa Claus came to see, all their grandkids are there, so Santa Claus came yesterday also and spent some time with the, with the children and they've got pictures of her because she, Christmas is, she's like me, Christmas is her favorite holiday. So it's just a very difficult time, but the church family's been there and then their family is coming in and there for them as well. So, um, but it was, it was heart wrenching to hear our pastor stand up today and to talk about her and he wept openly and he's taken a leave of absence as he needs to to be with her every moment because I mean she could go tonight and she could go several more days but he made a comment today and I've heard him say this before and I had forgotten it that 
we pray for people to receive salvation so that when they die, they will go to heaven. And then when somebody gets ready to go to heaven, we're praying for them to stay. And we do that. I mean, that's human nature is that we don't want to let go of them. Of course, during sickness, we also know that we pray for healing. And then we have to accept, you know, what is God's plan. Our days are numbered and, and he knows. He knows. And we just, when circumstances are bigger than we can understand, we just have to say, through the storm, Lord, I'll praise you and I'll trust you. So um, he left after he addressed the congregation. He left and then our former pastor preached and just preached a beautiful sermon. Beautiful sermon. Just brought out so many points about Christmas, different things that, you know, we just don't always hear. Uh, just a different perspective. And I know I'm just bouncing all over the place here. But I want you to make sure, if you don't get to listen to all of the video, make sure and fast forward to the last song. They're all very good. But the last song that the youth did is uh, We Need a Revival. And it was a beautiful song. And you'll hear me praising the Lord on there. And um, I wanted just to put the camera down and just lift my hands and praise the Lord. But I also wanted to videotape it too. So make sure and listen to it. We have some beautiful young people and they were all dressed out in their plaid today and they really worship the Lord. And this is hard on them. And the young man that sang the last song, he's our minister of music. Um, we really have two. It's him and his wife. They both are very active in it, but it's their son and they are very close to Sister Pam and them. And I know did you notice that it seemed like it was hard for Micah to sing with Pastor being there? Mm -hmm. I could tell that it was uh, emotional for him too. And so I think he's 15 now, but um, he just did a, a beautiful job on singing. So make sure and listen to all the music so that you can get to the last song. Um, and I know that I've said a lot about this, but um, you know, this is this is my life right now. And um, I know that a lot of, you know, different people are going through some hard times and we just need to lift each other up for this holiday season. The holidays are always not merry and bright for everybody. And um, as we were discussing last night, death knows no date. It doesn't matter if it's Christmas or a birthday or an anniversary or what it is. It, it doesn't know a date. So, but, um, but we had a beautiful service and as our pastor was leaving, the church stood and applauded him all the way out the side door and that I know was just like our former pastor got up and said it was just like we were hugging on him when we did that so we're behind them we're praying for them we're supporting them and but we know that when she takes her last breath on this earth she, she takes her first breath in heaven and what a beautiful assurance it is to have that if you don't have that assurance you need to talk to the master you need to talk to our savior because people that lose people on this earth but they know where their souls are going they have hope they know that they will see them again i've got so many loved ones over there now it just heaven is very sweet very sweet and with the things that we're facing here in this world heaven's really sweeter all the time isn't it john and so, um, but anyway, we're going home. I'm going to address some Christmas cards. <laughs> Wrap some Christmas presents. Wrap some Christmas presents. Oh, let me tell you. This man. Yes, you. <laughs> this man is impossible to buy for. <laughs> impossible. Oh, that truck just ran off the road, didn't it? No, uh, he just drew. He just what? He's getting his drink. Yeah, he's getting it straight now after he ran over that rough spot. But anyway, he is impossible to buy for. Can't please him. He just, oh my gosh, my daughter, our daughter and son-in-law has bought him stuff and it's still in boxes. And so we've got five deer that goes across our, our drive, our, our yard all the time in the woods behind us. There were three and now there's five. So... The uh, Reed, our oldest grandson, loves, loves, loves. He's seen him one time, but um, so we were talking about it. Would be neat to have a deer camera so Reed could see pictures of it when they're when he's you know when he doesn't catch them. And John's already been feeding them some, 
So I thought, I'll get John a deer camera and get him a feeder, and he'll love that with the boys. And I thought, man, I've done so good this year. And I drug it in the other day. I mean, it's not big, but the, the feeder is kind of big. But I drug in a bunch of groceries, and I took it, and I hid it in the closet, and I covered it up. So he comes in yesterday morning. I'm sitting on the couch, and he said, well, I've done some shopping this morning. I went and bought Reed a deer camera. I can't tell you what I said to him. <laughs> it was not very Christian. <laughs> Oh, I was so mad. I'm so, and see, I'm so transparent. I mean, he would have been, he said, you shouldn't have told me. Well, if you'd looked at my face, you would have known. I was sitting there and I was going, John, John, really? Really? So, yeah, he went and bought a deer camera. There's one in the closet. So, anyway, but he says, we can have two. So, he's going to keep that one. Or you need to take that one back. Get some money back. Gosh, we've spent so much money. Might not be a bad idea. Might not be a bad idea. Just have one right now and take the other one back. But yeah, so Stinker over here knows what his present is under the tree. Uh, we'll take the expensive one back. I think we paid the same amount for them. No, I got mine on sale. You did? Okay, we'll compare them and then we'll take the expensive one back. So anyway, he has no surprises under the tree because he's very... Which is no surprise. Huh? That's no surprise. Yeah, but... I always try to surprise you, but you're impossible. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. <sighs> anyway, I thought I'd done so good, and I did do good. I did so good that we were thinking the same thing. That means you've been married a long time, doesn't it? Yeah, you just didn't think about the right deer. It should have been a John Deere. I can't afford a John Deere. We just bought You're a new. You're a mean one, <laughs> Mrs. Grinch. <laughs> we uh, just bought a new central air and heat, and then we got tires on the car last week. Uh, so anyway, yeah. So anyway, he knows what his Christmas present is, but he doesn't know what Ashley Michaels got him. But let's see if he likes it. Who knows? Who knows? Anyway, but anyway, I've rambled on too long. I want you to make sure and listen to this youth. <laughs> You admitted it yourself. I'm ready to get him home, get him in the recliner. Um, I'm going to put the music on after this. I'm going to the shop. I'm not going to the recliner. I'm going to the shop. You going down with the guys? Yeah. His brothers hang out in the shop. And Lord, there's no telling if he's Burn a, wood. Burn wood and sit around and tell lies. <laughs> play back gammon. Play back. Y'all play back gammon? Yeah. Well, I didn't know that. Y'all don't play poker no more. Nobody's got no money. <laughs> Nobody's got no money. They used to play poker with, what, nickels and dimes and quarters? Oh, no. Oh, dollars? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, you see what I know. But anyway, he's going out the shop. So, I'm going home. My pajamas will be on as soon as I get there. And I'm in for the evening. So, but anyway, it's been a good, it's been a good Sunday. And, um, it's been sad. But, uh, it's just, you know, I, I told him I cried all my makeup off. Um, we love our pastor. We love Sister Pam. It's a hard time, but you know what? I'm so thankful that they've got us during this time because they're here and their family's out of state. So, of course, all the family's with them right now, but um, we're here for them, and we love them. And I told him last night that a lot of you on YouTube had said you were praying for them. So, just keep it up for the peace of God to be with them. And um, listen to some good music by our young people. Love you guys. I've been chatting every day. I said I wasn't doing Vlogmas, but evidently I'm doing something. So uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.
Yeah.
it's a time to celebrate. It's a time to solve. And a time to read. So would you do it? Would you do it again? Make that your prayer today. Do it again. There's a time to heal. Thank you, Father. Sing it, Michael. Sing it, Michael. 